In this video, I'm going to explain to you exactly what is the p-value and why it's so important for us to draw conclusions in clinical trials. Hi, my name is Randerson Cardozo. Welcome to the Meta-Analysis Academy. In this channel, I teach concepts of evidence-based medicine, systematic reviews, and meta-analysis with one goal in mind. The goal is that you will ultimately become independent in producing your own research through systematic reviews and meta-analysis, and with that, advance your career. I've done this myself with over 60 publications that really helped me get to train in great hospitals in the United States. So if this content interests you, consider hitting Hitting the like button and subscribing to our channel. In this video, we're going to go over the p-value. Yes, we're going to talk about statistics. So to understand the p-value, first you need to understand this really important concept of population and sample in a clinical trial or in any given study. So if I want to study a certain population, like patients with diabetes, for example, I want to test a new drug in patients with diabetes. I can't study all the patients with diabetes in the world. There's just no way. I have to select a sample of this target population. This sample may be from one hospital. It may be from multiple hospitals in one country, multiple countries all over the world, but it's still a sample. And we're going to use the results in the sample to make an inference, to make a conclusion about the population. So with that in mind, let's talk about what is a p-value. A p-value is the following. I'm going to give you the technical definition first and then give you an example. The p-value says the following. If the null hypothesis were true, let's remember what that no hypothesis is. The no hypothesis is that there is no difference in the outcome between two groups in the target population. So if you're comparing a new drug versus placebo, for example, in patients with diabetes, then the no hypothesis would be that in the target population of all patients with diabetes, this new drug and placebo have no difference between each other in terms of outcome. So the p-value says the following, if there truly is no difference between the two groups, if truly there is the no hypothesis is true, then what would be the likelihood that we would get such a result that we got in the sample, okay? By chance alone, because if in the population there's no difference between groups, what would be the likelihood that we would find this particular difference between the two groups in the sample? So let's go over an example so that this becomes clear to you. I've used this example in another video, but let's go over it again. In patients with pulmonary embolism who are treated with a new drug versus heparin. The outcome is mortality, and this is a randomized controlled trial that follows patients up to one year. I want you to realize that I use the p-code format here, which I think is particularly valuable for you to organize your research questions as we've discussed in other videos. So we talked about how the risk of dying in the new drug group is 10%. 100 of 1,000 patients died. In the heparin group, the risk is 20%. 20 of 1,000 patients died. So this is the risk. But that's a dramatic difference. One group 10% died and the other group 20% died. The question is, is this really, can we conclusively say that in the target population of all patients with pulmonary embolism, that this new drug is in fact better than heparin, that it really does decrease mortality, okay? So with that in mind, if we get a small p-value, less than 0.05, we would reject this no hypothesis that there's no difference between both groups, okay? We would make a statistical inference, okay? So in this example, the difference between the groups is dramatic. It's like 10%. There's a risk ratio of 0.5. If the p-value of that association is 0.01, that means that it's extremely unlikely, it's only 1% likely, it's very unlikely that if in the population, not in the sample, but in the population, there's no difference between both groups, between new drug and heparin, the likelihood 
that we would find these extreme results in the sample would be only 1%. It would only be 0.01. The likelihood that we would find these different results between the both groups or something even more extreme. So this is what a p-value is. It's the likelihood of finding these results in the sample or another result that's even more extreme if the null hypothesis were true. But we did get these results. So what's our conclusion? That the null hypothesis must be false. Because if the null hypothesis were true, it would be very unlikely for us to find these results in the sample. So with that in mind, I hope you can now understand p-values when you see it in clinical studies like this. This is a clinical study looking at aspirin in patients with diabetes. And the p-value is 0 0.003 for this outcome of major bleeding. Patients with aspirin had 4.1% bleeding. Patients with placebo had 3.2% bleeding. The p-value is small. The p-value is 0.003. What that means is if there was no difference between aspirin and placebo for major bleeding in the target population, then the likelihood of finding these results by chance alone would be extremely unlikely. It would be 0.003. Because of that, we refute, we reject the no hypothesis that there is no difference between these two groups. And we say, in fact, the reality is that in the population, aspirin does cause more bleeding than placebo. And we're confident in rejecting that no hypothesis. We're confident in making a conclusion about the population based on results of the sample because the p-value is very low. It's less than 0.05. Okay? I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to learn more about specific topics, leave it in the comments here so we can um, prepare another video for you. All right? Thanks for following.